What is up everyone? Today I have some news for you and then I also have a tiny little tutorial for anybody that wants to be listening to their music while playing their games. And you'd be surprised how many people actually want to do that myself included. So without any further ado, let's jump straight into the news. So first piece of news that we got is we have Onward 2 supposedly being confirmed by Mark Zuckerberg himself, who has actually apparently been slightly more active on his own platform than he normally is, or so I have heard. It looks like Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg has accidentally confirmed that Onward 2 is coming. <laughs> I don't know whether it was an accident, to be completely honest with you, but responding to a question about which VR games he's most looking forward to in a recent Facebook post, Zuckerberg said he is pretty excited for Onward 2. Here's a screen cap of the answer. What he said is, I'm playing a lot of Onward right now, and I'm pretty excited for Onward 2. There's a studio working on VR surfing slash foiling game, and I'm really excited for that one too. So, okay. It seems that Mark Zuckerberg is not only a Beat Saber gamer, but also an Onward gamer. I wonder how many of ye have accidentally met him in an Onward game and didn't even know it was him. Or maybe some of ye did know it was him. Let me know down below. But yeah, happy days for Onward fans, even though I guess that was to be expected with them acquiring Downpour. Oh, here's another cool one. Wrath of the Oblivion Afterlife launches on Steam VR headsets today. So Wrath of the Oblivion Afterlife has been available exclusively on Oculus headsets since its launch back in April. However, now anyone with a Steam VR compatible headset can take a crack at the patently creepy World of Darkness horror adventure. So that's pretty exciting because a lot of people get very angry when the Quest gets exclusives. I mean, the Quest players are pretty happy about it, but then everybody else with a Steam VR headset feels kind of left out because some of the games are actually really good. For example, Stormland, I still think is a fantastic game. Lone Echo, okay, I keep going back to it. I feel like people are gonna get bored of me coming back to Lone Echo, but it's a fantastic game. And if you have a Steam VR headset, yeah, yeah, you can actually play those, of course, because you can use, um, what's it called, Revive? And then you can actually play Oculus games on your Steam VR headsets, but it's always just nicer if they support them straight out. So, update, May 25th, 2021. Developers Fast Travel Games have released Wrath on Steam, with support for all major PC VR headsets. The game is currently 10% off, bringing from its MSRP of 30 down to 27 dollars, that is. Since it's had about a month out in the wild already, the Steam launch has benefited from a number of bug fixes, and the addition of 10 new collectibles, something Fast Travel says gives additional context to some of the characters in the story. So if you guys are into horror games and the game going over me right now looks kind of interesting, maybe check it out. You know, the more the merrier. Okay, and now something for some of you that want to be listening to your music in the background while playing your games. And I'm actually surprised at the amount of people that just don't see a benefit in this whatsoever. I mean, I guess some people just prefer to play in quietness, but I myself find music very important in my life. And when I'm playing something alone that isn't Beat Saber, because that just kind of loses context entirely, like for example, if I'm just chilling alone in VR chat, that sounds horribly sad, but it's true. I like to play some music in the background, and currently there's been two ways of doing that. Either blast it on your speakers so that you hear it, or put like one earbud in and leave the other ear open and things like that. But there are a few bypasses. For example, we have the bypass for Spotify, and now, thanks to a Reddit user on our Discord and on our Reddit, we actually have a bypass for YouTube, and I mean, I'm almost certain quite a few of you have actually done this by accident and already know about this thing's existence, but I'm here spreading it out for the people that don't know about its existence. So, in a post by Human that plays Skyrim, we have a complete bypass on how to play YouTube songs or just videos in general in the background of your games, and it's very, very simple. Let me show you how to do it. So, you want to grab your quest, power it on, wait like 60 hours, and... So once again, this is actually very simple, very, very similar to the Spotify bypass. So what you want to do is you want to fire up your browser, go on to YouTube in your browser. Yeah, again, this is going to be very simple. I just have a live stream going on here. Um, so I'm going to play an NCS live stream here so that we don't get copyright striked. Okay, so maybe it doesn't work on live streams. Let me try play something that isn't a live stream. 10 hours. That sounds dope. Okay, so we've got a uh, song going. And let's play. And there we go. Okay, so it does not work on live streams. However, it does actually work on normal games. So you can still hear it going. Okay. So, 
as you can see there, it's very, very simple to get that going for yourself. No trouble at all. And as I said, quite a few of you probably found this out by accident and already knew about its existence. Let me know if that's the case down below. What Human Plays Skyrim did say is after playing for about four hours or something like that, or was it 40 minutes or 40 hours? There's quite a difference between those two. He said that the music will stop and you'll just have to go back and play it again. Th that's just something because of the way Oculus manages its background tasks. People are trying to get around that, but we just haven't gotten around it just yet. I personally think this is an easier way of doing it than the Spotify bypass, because the Spotify bypass also requires you to use your phone and things like that, and it all just kind of gets messy. I mean, it does have the benefit of allowing you to change music using your phone, but I, th I feel like just adding another device in there just ruins the point of it being standalone. So playing music on YouTube, huge thumbs up for me, and I will definitely be using this in my lonely gameplays in the future. So that is quite exciting for anyone there that wants to play music and wants to join the music gang. <laughs> Hashtag music gang down in the comment section. So here's another one. FitXR has added a high intensity mode in their latest update. So if you guys use virtual reality for exercise, like I personally myself actually do quite a lot, because apart from running, I do like to get a little bit of arm movements in there from time to time. And FitXR is actually Actually quite decent for that. So FitXR update adds Formula One style high intensity training exercises. FitXR, the subscription based VR workout app for Oculus Quest, launched its third in game exercise regime, which brings high intensity interval training, HIIT, to the mix. So again, FitXR is actually a subscription based service, so not everyone is going to go for that, but I feel like it's nice to get that update into our news segment here because it really shows you how much the fitness virtual reality genre is growing and it is growing quite a bit. I mean, just look at Facebook's marketing. It is insane to see how many people are using virtual reality for fitness. And once again, do let me know if you're one of those people down below, because it's just exciting to see this thing actually being used for real life applications. And our well, and our final piece of news, Stones of Harla is coming to the Oculus Quest next week. Stones of Harla, the VR role playing game RPG is listed in the coming soon section of the store with a 10% discount on early orders that takes from its usual price of $9.99 to $8.99. This is actually the first game on the Oculus Store on Quest to offer a pre-order option. Other titles like Larsenauts or Four Bowl VR are simply listed as coming soon. So it's interesting to see that they now gave the developers the option to do a pre-order little thing and do a little discount on it. So that's interesting. That's definitely going to entice some people to buy. So watching the trailer here, it seems like it is actually an RPG game with some magic involved. And you kind of like draw the magical spells from your book with your fingers and you attack the enemies. It has quite an interesting art style with the enemies looking kind of like 2D like almost but everything else being actually super high resolution, or at least that's what it seems like from the trailer. It definitely looks interesting, and I'm probably going to end up looking into it so that I have something to play in my free time. So if that is the kind of game that interests you, make sure to check it out down below. And that is going to be it for today's video, guys. Thank you all so much for joining me. I hope you all have a fantastic day or night. And if you guys liked the video, please leave a like. If you guys disliked it, I guess this button works too, but please tell me why down in the comment section below. If you guys are not yet part of our community, but would like to join us, learn the latest news before I make a video about them, or just chat with us, join our Discord down below. You can also join our Reddit down below, where I want to see you posting your spice memes. If you guys would like to support the channel in any way, shape, or form, we've got sick merch down below that doesn't put a huge out on your body and mugs that boost your FPS by 300%. And if you guys want to be notified about your content coming up on the channel daily, make sure to smack that subscribe button if you're doing my balancing annex video. Peace. At this point, you can like barely understand that. <laughs>